since I've been there before, I'm pretty certain I can get to uh, back to Swan Seas, so that's not a problem. Although, I definitely took the back way last time, and I'm not sure uh, how to take the front way, so to speak. But, I've got my map, I've got my phone for GPS, so we'll be okay, I think. Well, if the group left it on time, then they are about an hour into the trip so far. Um, I haven't caught up to them. I do remember most of the route. I am in a Gila right now. A Gia, excuse me. And I'm going to go ahead and stop for a couple of minutes. I do know that lunch was supposed to be at the Boyce uh, training facility, which is a spot that I have not been to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull out my uh, one of my two maps. See if I can orient, orient myself and see if the group maybe catches up to me instead. Because I might have actually been be ahead of them. Which would be odd, but they might have got a late start too. Uh, I could have been speeding, uh, speeding up to try to catch up to them and actually being further ahead. So we'll see. I'm enjoying myself so far. This is an area I'm familiar with because um, either north or south of me here are both areas that I've been exploring. Um, and have done videos on. So let me break out the map and see where the heck I am, or at least where I'm supposed to be going. Well, I just saw two Jeeps I recognize that passed me, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, catch up to them. Well, I never did catch them. Which is strange because I was definitely driving uh, faster than uh, faster than I should for this. Anyway, um, so I am in Hope, Arizona, and I think I'm near the turnoff of where I thought they were going to turn off. So I'm going to go ahead and stop again uh, since I didn't catch them and get my bearings again and uh, continue on. Like it is all 
all uh, dried out now, so that's a good, that's a good sign. Well, for reference, I am at the East Cactus Plain Wilderness. Um, Ballast is down this way. I'm right here because I just passed the canal. Swansea My Road is up this way. Um, this is Swansea 10 miles up that way. So if I'm here, I gotta go up and around. And that matches what my map says, but this is where I'm at right now. Nice day. I gotta give it credit, although it is uh, like end of November and it's still probably mid 60s to 70 up here so carrying on kind of fun going this way no real four-wheel drive but that is Swansea off in the distance but uh, that is beautiful coming out of this I will definitely have to uh, stop and get some stills of this well I'm early apparently I don't see anybody else it's 12 15 and that's kind of the time they were expecting to be here 12 30 ish so we'll see when they arrive they said that they might be a little early a little late um, 
they were on their own uh, uh, path and agenda and that's all good because it was me who screwed it up and uh, didn't catch up with them when I thought I would. Anyway, uh, we are at Swansea, uh, Swansea town site. And now that I'm actually here in the daytime, I can see a lot that I didn't see uh, before, which is kind of cool. And of course, you know, people have been ripping stuff off. And now this is interesting right here because it does talk about the uh, the actual mines itself. And that was 1867. You could see the renovated buildings off in the distance. They did put new tin roofs on them so they wouldn't collapse anymore. That's good. Uh, there is a uh, small cave up there. You can see mine tailings up here. And I'm going to take a slow roll uh, down there and with my other camera in hand. And we'll start, uh, we'll start documenting when we get a little further down until the rest of the gang shows up. Definitely something I hadn't seen last time was the uh, uh, grave marker off the uh, side of the road here um, for a Sandra Lynn Dugas, September, September 1936 to May 1937, so just a, just a young child. Um, and somebody took the time to uh, put a, looks like a brass marker on it, and uh, they've kept up the uh, uh, steel cross, mark the grave. Definitely uh, good of them. This is, we are this far away. Now you've got some mine tailings right over there and it's all graded off. Now one of the things, because this is a fairly well-known uh, site, even though there's nobody here today on a Sunday. Um, now you now the sun's right there, but you can see the road going up there too. There was a lot of mining, but they have uh, definitely tried to uh, protect people by putting up the grates to make sure people don't fall in these uh, shafts because most of these are actually vertical shafts and they're deep. We're dropping down the uh, lower side that I didn't go down last time because, to be honest, I couldn't even see it. And we'll see what we see down here. And this whole area was all mining. You can still see remnants of a building off to my right hand side, old tin cans. Let's turn left. There are trails all, all over down here. Uh, it looks like an old trash metal dump on the right hand side. More difficulty. Uh, that concerns me. Oh, look at this. big uh, can and pottery dump down here. Huh. It's huge. It goes all the way down into the little river bottom there. I still like getting an opportunity to do free range exploring and that's basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'll get plenty of opportunity to go take a look at more of Swansea in a, in a bit. But uh, since this area had so much activity, and there are trails to trails to explore, I am happy to go take a look. And assuming the rest of the gang is going to show up, I can if something happens, I can hike out of here to and go wait for. Uh, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, I am in four-wheel drive.
but it hasn't been scary yet, so. Just looking for anything interesting. Reminds me of the road that I got took to get up here the first time. Because that was pipeline, a gas pipeline road, and it was um, intense in places. So I didn't find anything yet. I'm not gonna go further yet. I think I'll head back into Swan Sea at least for the time being and wait to see if anybody shows up. I don't want to go too far astray um, or that hike gets a lot further. I am used to seeing the tin can farms when I go to these places. Um, what I'm not used to seeing is some of this porcelain, though. I was going to see if I could find any markings on this stuff because this is this is definitely older baked ware. Well, there we go. Homer Laughlin. Since I've done, since I've uh, dealt in antiques before. Uh, at least a little bit. Uh, that is one of the older companies. Uh, if I could find the stamping number on these, I could actually figure out when I get back what the date was. What's this one say? Actually, when it was a. Uh... What was that? And. Annery? An innery? Uh, I can probably read it when I see the film. Some of these cans are really, really old style. What's on the bottom of that one? Nothing. Yeah, there's probably not at all left of any of these to. And this is definitely plain. Almost like earthware. You got a little bit of the symbol there, but nothing. Nothing on uh not enough to pick up. It's too bad. I'd be curious. Just wasting away down here. But those are definitely some old cans. All right, let's head back into Swansea. Well, I always talk about the strangeness, but uh, here's one. Fairly recent campfire and there is a wine glass uh, sitting in the middle of the charcoal. Um, and it has been since it's been since it's rained because the glass is half full. Not a bad, uh, not a bad philosophy. And it's right up from this uh, part of the mine uh, area, so we're going to go hike in there. We just had a bunch of uh, razors go up into Swan Sea, so I'm going to explore this for a little bit. And I haven't seen any of my group yet, so. Well, you can tell by how much grading they put up that uh, this was a sizable entrance right here. Let's see what we can see from here. And then I'll climb up the top and we'll go across. That's a big hole, big shaft. All right, I'm gonna shut it off for just a second while I climb the side of this thing to get over up that. I'm not even sure what this was, but it's old and uh, interesting design. I mean, I kind of thought seats at first, but 
maybe not, but it is definitely narrow. And it had, well, there you go. There's an old uh, sign right there. And there are hinges right here. So I don't know if this was a hopper or possibly there was padding and people rode this into the mine area. Oh, this is kind of cool. Hmm. All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Well, I don't scare. I don't recommend this for anybody that's like scared of heights. But uh, that is that hole. It goes a long, long way down. And even though it's graded off, I still give the grates respect too because they are metal. They do have weak points. But even in daylight, you can't really see the bottom of this. It goes down there a long way. And that's where we are in relation to the. Uh, the buildings, the main part of the buildings. The trail's all up in here. There's cuts in the side right there. So, all right, time to head back to the Jeep. I still haven't seen anybody other than the razors. Well, I've been exploring Swan Sea for an hour so far. It is about 1.15 and still uh, no arrival yet. Doesn't mean they're not gonna show up because they had other places to explore as well. And since I'm relatively certain I saw two Jeeps uh, from the group coming up this way earlier like I said when I was sitting there in uh, a year um, I don't know I'm enjoying myself but I'm kind of hoping they show up so we can all get together and share anyway I got some lunch with me so now's a good time to grab a bite and see if anybody shows up well as you can see by the placard here I am now at the main structures of Swan Sea at least part of it. This is the Clara Consolidated Offices. You can see that it was made out of, or a lot of it was made out of adobe brick uh, and concreted over and that unfortunately is not going to survive a whole lot longer. It does look like they've done even more work on the um, structures over there. It looks like they've uh, put a uh, skim coat over it because there's no graffiti and um, they're all uniformly gray. And I'll have to look at my old, uh, my other video from two years ago to see. Because they had the roofs on them then, but I don't remember the, the buildings being that good. And I could be wrong, but it seemed to me that they were all whitewashed at that point. It says this was the area of the general store, which might have been this end of this large trough here. And those up there were the consolidated offices, but there is nothing really around me right here with the signs out. And this is where we are in comparison to the buildings over there. Okay, this is the view down the row uh, in between the houses. And it is definitely coming apart. You can see how the plaster is starting to come off the, uh, the upper wood up there. The floors were definitely that way uh, before. There is graffiti that was scratched into the walls, so... Some repair work has been done. Again, these were mud and adobe and definitely falling apart to the inside. Uh, that's an interesting little structure right there. Almost maybe like it was heat. Let's go look at the other. No, well, that's the same on both sides. Hmm. Well, that's strange. Now, like I, like I said in my last video, when the last time I was here, um, there was at least one uh, B grade or less movie that was filmed here in the 1970s when it was even worse. Uh, some action thriller that basically went nowhere. Most of this is recent. 2011, 2010, 2013. So people still can't leave well enough alone. That is an interesting mural right next to the door, though. That's not like somebody graffitied that. So, and it looks like they uh, washed around it. So that might be original. Well, that would be interesting. I mean, this place was, is we looked at the uh, gravesite up there around at least to the 1930s uh, before it completely shut down. 
this is the only one left that had a wood uh, like a uh, window frame left and there is still some glass in it and then glass is newer that's and sharp too but but that's also plexiglass uh, and a bed frame and an old seat frame and so I don't know what they were doing with this one plus there is a attic up there a little cubby hole space so that's interesting and unique same view as my last video but with uh, since it's much earlier uh, without the sunset They have the largest part of the mining complex uh, fenced off. I mean, you've got one here just off to the side, uh, but you've got, actually, you've got an old uh, 55 through 57, or maybe 59, uh, 55 through 59 Chevy, or GMC. Uh, but behind it, you've got another uh, covered one over here. You've got a covered one There's an added that you can see on the other side, but it's also fenced up another deep Shaft here. This is the one that I showed on my last video Or the other one actually I think it was the other one over there, but again another deep shaft And let's go take a look at the uh, Actual strip over here and people that manage to ride out here even though they're not supposed to. Uh, there is a kind of a it could be a dynamite cave for that for that matter. But that one's still open. That one's fenced off. Well alright I'm gonna go back to the Jeep and drive in closer. Leave no open hole unexplored. That's how I am. Well, this is where the essay office would be, and that uh, that particular office would be for uh, determining how much ore was actually, or how much um, workable material was actually in the rock and in the ore. So uh, these are the ones to determine how much money you were going to make, or if there was anything worth it. And that dates back to 1908. It's an interesting platform. nice walkway that was there that was all uh, different color Let's see what this sign says the Asarco general offices from 1929 so this was towards the tail end of the uh, uh, when this mine was still operational Okay, so north and west from the standing buildings, there is even more uh, mining still. You can see another uh, graded over pit over there. But this is some of the largest of the actual mining section itself. I'll show you this shaft over here. Then you've got the, uh, the large, and I want, I want to say this used to be a stamping mill. Uh, but it's hard to tell with what little is left and then over this direction is where uh, that uh, Attic was that I was going to check out if I can get to it again more very deep deep shafts Straight down It's amazing that they uh, They worked it this way up on top of the grate and it's hard to see because of the the angle of the sun and everything on the uh, grate itself, but uh, trust me, it goes down a long way. Go across the, the widest of the beams here. We're over the deepest part of the shaft. We'll go hike and check this out next. Well, this area is far more spread out than I thought it was. Off in the distance, you've got another building over there. Uh, Another shaft here, and another building off in the distance over here, uh, before we get to the what I think was the stamping mill. 
Well, at some point somebody made sure that you could still get to this with the railroad tie stairs. Can't read the sign anymore. That wasn't all concrete, that was actually fired brick. Huh, very interesting. I see a sign over there. I can imagine they would be really torqued off if you uh, got inside here, so. Archaeological site. It's interesting that they call this an archaeological site. Hardly qualifies as old enough, but here's what it was. Step three, dust chamber. Well, they're definitely taking this pretty seriously. Uh, even though it is starting to still fall down. But they've got it fenced off pretty securely. That's probably a good thing. Fired brick, it might actually last a while. So, who knows? Maybe a couple more generations will get to enjoy this. I'm probably walking this backwards because uh, the placard up there was step three, this is step stop two, and this talks about how it was the smelter, uh, 1910. And that would make sense for that big uh, furnace on the back side of it. Uh, I see another placard over there. That might be uh, stop one. Well, there was definitely an interactive trail here of some port a long time ago. Uh, I guess when it was more popular, more accessible. Uh, this is stop four. So I found two, three, four, but not in order. Uh, but this talks about the uh, uh, overlooking the Swan Sea Railroad. Uh, but also over here, you got the reverberatory furnace, circa 1913. Wow. That was big when it was when it was new, that's for sure. I don't see any remnants of the railroad, though. And in theory, this was a machine shop back in 1910. Uh, an old buried 55-gallon drum. So, think back in the day, Almost 110 years ago, uh, I've only scratched the surface of all the buildings here so far, and that might have been the railroad track right there, at least part of it, because I see railroad ties going. Wow, this place was way bigger than I thought. Definitely, definitely an odd bit of slag here, almost like a round cone uh, that somebody has chipped off parts of, and actually graffitied too, but still. Uh, it's actually kind of eerie and cool looking. I think uh, the group is finally showing up. So hopefully they had a good, uh, enjoyable trip along the way. We'll know. I'll know if it's them in a little bit. But it does look like three or four Jeeps. Well, I talked to the leader of the group. For a little bit and I'm gonna follow them back in and poke my nose around a little bit more now that everybody's here. It looks like a pretty good showing. That's always a good sign. They uh, did take Caroline Road which is the direction that I did not go. But I could have swore that the other two Jeeps I saw were part of this group uh, and maybe they are and we're going someplace else. Who knows? Well they made it to the cave that I was talking about. It doesn't look like it's real deep, so it might be a uh, hmm, might be able to make it to that one too. Anyway, might be a dynamite cave. Let's take a look. All right, I got a little bit of a flashlight anyway. Okay. B 
beams there. Yeah, probably a dynamite, dynamite storage. At least, I, at least I know. All right, what about this other one? Can I even get there? Yeah, probably. Kind of narrow. Now this one's fenced off. Huh. And there's even less to this one than the other one. Now that's pretty weird. What's down in here? Anything? Nope. All right. I explored them. Now I can head back in good conscience. Well, even more to find. So let's keep going. Well, this is cool. I'll be honest, this is another one of those places that looks like I could spend days out here exploring everything that's hidden. buildings up here, or remnants of buildings, and I see, uh, I see the gang over there, this was, these were company houses, that's what it says, up till 1917. Oh wow, whole row of them. Excuse my finger. There we go. Several of these. All right, we're gonna go right. This might be bedding for the railroad. It kind of looks like it. Cause that looks like ties right there. Railroad track scales, 1910. That means this up here might be the, what used to be the railroad station. Yep, this was the railroad station circa 1910. Well, we're heading out, but I think there's still more to see on the way, so this video is not over yet. But the sun is probably within an hour of going down. A little natural archway over here, too, on the way out. Well, we're past the archway and we're climbing our way up to Swan Sea. So, this is going to be... Uh, Sort of the swan song of this video. And sorry for playing you right in the sun here. Uh, but I know I'm going to need uh, some gas, probably in a Gia. So uh, I'll go ahead and sign off then. Maybe find something else along the way. But if not, I'll still say goodbye in a little bit. Well, it is the end of another adventure. I want to give a special shout out to Jim and all the gang from uh, Swore and 4x4 for inviting me along. Uh, it is always a pleasure to go out with these guys. They go to some great locations, have a lot of fun. 
this home. You can see the, the it's just fitting around in there.